happened to be in the, the local fishmongers in Church Street and he said, oh, there have been some guys down the street looking for funding to, to buy the ex seam lifeboat, the George Army. Alan Brooks, who is now one of our volunteers, agreed that we would go along to their fortnightly meeting just to see what was going on, what was involved. As they say, the rest is history. Here we are, virtually five years later, with a restored lifeboat and a heritage centre. Built in 1828, Seam Harbour is the only man-made harbour to exist on the northeast coastline. It was built by the third Marquis of Londonderry to facilitate the transport of goods from local industries. Because of the fast-growing industries around the harbour, such as coal mining, the original harbour proved inadequate to deal with the million tonnes of coal. The dock was extended and officially reopened in 1905 and still serves the town today. In 1949, Groves and Guttridge were commissioned by the RNLI to produce a twin-engine Liverpool-class boat, official number ON873. The funding was provided by Miss Elizabeth Elmy, a spinster at Stoke Newington, London. She requested the lifeboat be named George Elmy in remembrance of her late brother. In January 1950, the newly built lifeboat arrived at Seam Harbour where it was officially named by Lady Londonderry on the 26th of June 1950. Seam Harbour was the home of the George Army lifeboat from June 1950 until November 1962. George Elmy responded to 26 calls and saved the lives of 20 people in 12 years. During the late afternoon on Saturday the 17th of November 1962, the lifeboat set out with five crew members on its last voyage. The lifeboat went out on the 17th of November 1962 to answer a call from a fishing vessel, Economy. The Economy had been launched somewhere between half two and three o'clock. The weather wasn't too bad. The weather got up at quarter to four or thereabouts. There's another vessel went out just before the economy, the Silver Spray. It returned to the dock at four o'clock and raised the alarm that the economy was still out. The lifeboat was launched at ten past four and within ten minutes they were alongside the economy and they lifted all five fishermen off. They brought themselves back to see them and just as they were coming across the bar, that's the, between the South Pier and the North Pier. They were caught by two massive waves and it turned the boat over. The boat was not a self-rider, it is a unsinkable boat. So once it turned over, that was it, it wasn't coming back. And the sea state, by this time, it was a hurricane force wind. It was driven onto the beach. Unfortunately, nine people were lost and one survived. After its repair, George Almy was put back into service as a relief boat serving time at Pool Harbour until she was sold in 1972 for £600. Following a career as a fishing boat in various harbours, she was eventually put up for sale on eBay in May 2009. East Durham Heritage bought the boat with help from a local fisherman. In April 2009, I was looking on eBay for things to do with sea. And I came across a lifeboat which claimed to be the ex same lifeboat, the George Emily. I thought that's strange, it's not Emily, it's Ellen. But I delved further into it and I found out it was indeed the ex same lifeboat, the George Emily. I made inquiries and confirmed it with various people that it was. 
we decided that we would buy it. I then got in touch with the fellow who had won the auction on eBay, told him who I was, who I represented, what we want to do with it. So he said, well, the boat did belong to sea. If you want to do that, I'll bring the boat up for you and I'll sell you. The George Army returned to its home in Seine on May the 5th, 2009. With the help of major national funders and local donations, the fundraising began. We knew precious little about raising funds from various sources. Fortunately, there's information available which guides you along the route. We had, from within the community of Seam, an anonymous donation, the first donation we got of £5,000, and that remains anonymous to this day. We identified possible funders, people like Sir James Not Trust, Heritage Lottery Fund, Asda Foundation, the Barber Foundation. Uh, there was a group within Seam, uh, a dance group called Time Steps, by their own efforts, putting on two concerts, raised in excess of £4,000 for us. This dance group is made up of children who are enthusiastic about dancing. They very nicely raised this, these funds for us, 4,000 plus. And then the wider community of SEAM also donated. In April 2011, the target was reached and the restoration of the George Army could commence. When we, uh, when we get the boat back and we actually get all the monies together and get the restoration done, we hope to bring it back and put it in the 1870 lifeboat house and use it as a, a, a maritime museum so we can bring school children down because that's who we're doing it for, we're doing it for the future generations. We also want it to be a permanent reminder of the maritime heritage of the sea and of course the lifeboat station that was here for 109 years. My first involvement with the George Elmy or any of the uh, family or crew started when I was a teenager. I knew Jack Miller's daughter. He was the coxswain of the lifeboat. He suddenly lost his life in 1962. I knew his daughter, Marie. We were friends for a while. My next involvement with the George Elmy was as an apprentice stonemason. I helped make the headstones for two of the crew that died that night. For the first seven months after her return to Seam, thanks to Seam Dock Company, East Durham Heritage stored the lifeboat at CM's South Dock. After initial preparation work was carried out, including the removal of the aft wheelhouse and anything else that was not part of the original design, she was moved to an industrial unit on CM Grange Industrial Estate in December 2009 for more work to be carried out undercover. By April 2011, the target of £92,000 was successfully reached to complete the restoration of the George Almy. On the 20th of April 2011, the George Almy was moved from her temporary home in a unit on CM Grange Industrial Estate to Fred Crowell's boatyard on the River Tyne in South Shields. Over the next two years, restoration work was carried out daily, including the search for the missing original parts and replacements. I always wanted to be involved in the restoration of the George Elmy. I was very interested in the hands-on process of doing this. Consequently, I think, if my memory serves me right, I was the first of the volunteers to go down to Fred's yard and actually get my hands dirty. 
The restoration itself, when you looked at the wreck of the boat, seemed like mission impossible. It was very interesting doing jobs like replacing deck panels, uh, repairing bulkheads, making up new seats. New skills being learnt by ourselves from Fred Crowell. He kept an eye on us on what we did. And when I look at the restoration, like the seats around the side of the boat, and you look back now and I think, I helped do that and I'm very proud that I helped do that. Learning new skills was an extra bonus. Things that you never thought you'd be able to do. Repairing damaged copper work on the inside of the engine bay, cutting damaged pieces out and nailing brand new pieces in place. There were lots of other jobs that people didn't really like doing but needed doing. Rubbing down, scraping, paint work. But there were some jobs that were, a very, that were very pleasurable to do. Uh, helping varnish the canopy, varnishing the seats and painting the upper hull. It was a shame actually when the deck panels were replaced. They looked so nice when they were rubbed down. The natural wood looked very nice. But to have to cover them in a coat of great paint seemed a bit of a sin. But nevertheless it had to be done to maintain the authenticity of the restoration. I started board building at 15 and a half, working for Robson's South Shields. Did an apprenticeship till I was 21, and then I've done boats ever since. A few years ago, I was approached for to do a bit of contract work on a lifeboat called the George Elmy. Somebody had actually spotted this board on eBay. But anyway, when they spotted it, they decided to go for it, buy it, and do a full restoration on it. I did the restoration on it, which took approximately a year and a half. It was an absolute pleasure to work on the board. It was a challenge, uh, a real challenge, because it was all traditional wooden boat skills. None of these uh, boats will ever get built again. So it was a, it was a one-off chance for a, a job that I really enjoyed. But we did have some help from the East Durham Heritage and they were a good help and I think we all learned a lot from each other and the lads did enjoy the experience. Uh, a lot of banter between we and uh, it, it went down well. Sourcing missing parts proved a difficult task until a semi-derelict redundant lifeboat was located on the Isle of Skye. Brian Scullin received a phone call from two friends, informing him that a journey north to Counts Cross may be worthwhile and helpful in locating the missing parts. After a meeting was arranged to inspect the lifeboat, George Maitland and Brian Scullin were assisted in retrieving what they needed by the owner of the boat. This included vital parts, such as a gearbox, a bull ring and the rudder. Brian later returned with Ernie Cooper and his son James to gather more pieces from the lifeboat. Parts for these Liverpool class lifeboats, you can't get them off the shelf these days. You can get some which look very similar, but they're not, uh, they're not the same. Fortunately, we were able to find uh, two lifeboats of Liverpool class that were lying derelict on the Isle of Skye we were able to take parts off those. Very valuable parts, which would have cost a lot of cash to make up from scratch. If we had one part and we needed several, we were fortunate to be able to locate a brass founder through one of the relatives of the crew. He would take them along to the brass foundry. They would copy them and let us have them back. Things like scupper plates, on, which let the water off the deck, which are like glory fine cut flaps. They only work in one direction, go out, so the water runs off the deck. We had six of those that came with the boat. We wanted 20. So we had 14 of them recast. We got as much as we could, and whatever we took off, we used as a, as a template to get other pieces cast. And we had a very successful foray effort to the yeah, Isle so.
Just under two years later, the restoration was nearly complete and George Almy was launched on the 14th of March 2013 from Fred Crowell's boatyard in South Shields. successfully sailed to the Tyne Dock and on the 18th of March was moved to Royal Cays Marina for storage until the 23rd of June when it returned to its home in Seam. After years of hard work, East Durham Heritage Group fulfilled their dream of restoring the George Almy to her original state and sailing her back into sea and dock where she belongs. Here, they were greeted by the general public, the proud community of Seam, and the families of those who were lost on the night of November 17, 1962. My name's Valerie Thorpe. My dad was a lifeboat mechanic, Leonard Brown, who was lost on the lifeboat. This place, after the boat was done, is where I come now. It's just somewhere to come back to, to see this and all the work they've done. And I very appreciate all the men who've done all the work on it. When they came back and I had the chance to have a look on the boat, it was my dad's boat back to the way it was, the way I remembered it. The members of East Durham Heritage Group were nationally recognised for their hard work and were nominated for a National Museum and Heritage Award. Museum and Heritage Awards 2014 were held in mid-May in London at 8 Northumberland Avenue. A group of us went down, uh, 10 altogether, to the event which included a uh, rather good uh, dinner and the presentation of the awards. The category that the George Elmy Restoration Project was in was the Restoration and Conservation, in which there were five shortlisted. The winner was the Mary Rose Trust, which is uh, associated with Henry VIII's flagship, the Mary Rose. There was also a Highly Commended, which unfortunately we didn't get. We were one of the other three in the group. So I suppose you can argue that out of all the applicants of the nominations, we came somewhere between third and fifth. There may have been 50 in the initial uh, list put forward, so we feel that uh, we did pretty well. stands proud in Seam Lifeboat House for all to see. The Lifeboat House is now renovated and used as a museum for visitors of all ages and is run by volunteers of the East Durham Heritage Group. This has been a, a life-changing project as far as we're concerned. There's no doubt about that. And the state learning curve for all of us has been a challenge, but I think we've uh, We've been up to the challenge. Even when I'm asleep, I dream about it. <laughs> if I'm not thinking about it, I'm dreaming about it. <laughs> <laughs>